Sisai could easily have such a severe spine in a few years that he wouldn't be able to, uh, to breathe well and he would die. Sisai has juvenile scoliosis. He's probably going to need traction, which means they're going to drill four holes in the skull and stretch him. Stretch him when he's sitting, stretch him when he's standing, and stretch him when he's lying down. And the problem is his chest needs to be able to expand, otherwise he's going to be left with the lungs capacity of a seven-year-old for the rest of his life. Sisi doesn't leave his street often. When he does, it's usually to go to school, where he's third in his class. But other kids have started to figure out that Sisei's back is different from theirs. At home, Sisei's single mother cares for him, taking whatever domestic work she can to feed the family. But there is no spendable income beyond basic necessities. The American doctor runs clinics across the city multiple times a week. This was Cisse's first trip to see the doctor, and he was one of more than 60 patients that day. In 2006, I got 20 new spines. 2012, I got almost 300. Realistically, aid given through this clinic is Cisse's only hope. His mother could never afford the surgery, and stories of botched spinal procedures by Ethiopian doctors are commonly heard around the clinic. Cisse is one of thousands in this situation. And these kids are walking around. They have some quality of life, they're enjoying life, they have friends, they may be teased by their classmates, but they inspire me, the way they keep on going. After spending six hours in the waiting room for a 10-minute examination, the doctor told Cisse to get a passport. He's scheduled to travel to Ghana for a potential surgery before the end of the year. The surgery is dangerous and will require a long recovery. He will likely be apart from his mother for three months. This will be the start of Cisse's long journey toward a straighter spine.